Shalom, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us for this worship service. We're going to start by reading a scripture. We're going to read Galatians chapter 4, verse 17. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you, that ye might affect them. Now we're going to open or offer an opportunity to open with a hymn and a prayer, which everyone can do on their own. But before we pause the video, I want to go over a couple of prayer requests. I'm going to start off with the COVID issue we talked about in some previous services. Many of the people that had COVID we've asked you to pray for have gotten over it, but with some of them it is still lingering. So if you could please pray for these brothers and sisters that this last little remaining hurdle, they'll be able to get over it. For those that have come down with COVID since then, that they will get well. And those that have gotten better, we need to be thankful to the Lord that he helped them through these illness, these illnesses quickly. Again, all these people are vaccinated. So it hasn't been like it was back before the vaccination where people were just dying. Um, it's ranging anywhere from a mild cold to a bad flu, but it's survivable. So please keep these brothers and sisters in your prayers both those that need them for healing and those that have been healed, but more especially those that, where it's lingering um, because it's, it's hard. That's what happened to me. It, it lingered with me. It didn't go away for a while, and I, I know how rough it is. As far as the brothers that we were praying for with jobs, both of them did receive new jobs. I believe one of them has started, so please pray for him that... This new position will work out well and everything will go smoothly. Please pray for the brother that's transitioning out of his current position and into this new position, that everything will go smoothly for him during this transition, this time of transition. <clears throat> and please give a general prayer for the saints that we can all be economically sound as there's still talk of, in the United States anyway, it's going into a recession we're having a lot of problems where corporations are making a lot of money and profits by raising their prices while wages are still low. And that is causing difficulty for people here in the United States. And I know it causes problems for other people around the world. So please pray that these corporations, these corporate leaders will soften their hearts and worry more about taking care of their employees and their customers and taking care of their stockholders and lining their own pockets. Uh, greed is is never going to be a surefire way to riches. It's just a short-term gain, and in the end, it always ends poorly because if there's no one left to buy your stuff, you can't sell anything. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and pause, if you'd like, and... Sing an opening hymn of your choosing and say an opening prayer, and then we'll be here when you get back. We are now going to read the Shema together as a symbol of our unity as Latter-day Saints. Shema Yisrael, Yeva Elohenu, Yeva Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yavah is our Elohim, Yavah is unity. So the scripture that I read earlier, that's going to be the basis for our message today. And I know it's a little strange. I had a weird dream last night, and I'm not going to get into that, but I will say that throughout the dream, Galatians 4.17 kept coming up. I didn't know what it said, people just kept saying it. And when I woke up, I still remember the dream very vividly, and I was praying and asking the Lord, you know, what should I talk about? What should the message be about today? And I heard again, Galatians 4.17. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll look it up. And I did, and I thought, wow, I, 
I don't know what to say about this. This is a very strange verse. And I didn't really understand it right away. And I want to tell you just a little something about me. When I was younger, you know, I'm an introvert. I've mentioned that before. And I really struggled giving talks or teaching classes, doing any kind of public speaking. And I prayed to the Lord you know, for counsel. What do I do? How can I, how can I fix this? How can I do a better job serving you? And I prayed on it. And I even fasted on it. And I obtained a talk on cassette. This was back in the, in the mid to late 90s. And it was a Brighamite Salt Lake City Church, one of their former apostles, Matthew Cowley. And in it, he said that the president of their church at that time had told him when he was made an apostle, don't write your talks. I'm not telling this to everybody, but I'm telling you, don't write your talks. Just get up and speak as the spirit provides. And he said, well, sometimes the spirit's with me and it goes well, and sometimes it isn't and it doesn't. We'll see if the spirit's with us today. I chuckled, but at the same time, I felt very moved by the Holy Spirit that that was a message for me as well, that this was the answer to my prayers. And so ever since then, I have never prepared to teach a class. I have never prepared to share a message, give a talk or anything, whether it be for work or for the fellowship or back when I was a Brighamite for that, that particular branch of the Latter-day Saint movement. So <clears throat> I have to say that this is the first time that I actually had to sit down and do some research because I got this first and I felt very impressed. I was like, well, maybe I should just find something else in this chapter. And the Lord said, no, Galatians 4.17. And so I said, okay, I'll do that. So I do what I like to do. I, I went to the Greek. I started looking at other translations. What's a better way of translating this? Because I need to be able to understand it. And what I discovered is one of the problems with translating languages is you'll have a term or a word or a phrase that really doesn't have a good English equivalent. And I'm guessing this must be one of those because this particular word, and I'm not going to bother trying to pronounce it for you because I'm self-taught and I don't really know how to pronounce these words very well, but it translates to jealousy or eager for or wanting to possess something. And obviously you're not going to say when reading this, these people are wanting to possess you because that, that sounds strange too. But understanding what the word means here and zealous for you, what does that mean? Well, it's trying to say that these people want you for themselves, but not in a good way. Instead, they want to isolate you. They want to make you feel set apart, segregated from them so that you will be just as desirous to be a part of them. And I was talking to Christine about it and asking her what her thoughts were. And she said, well, it sounds to me like what it's saying. And she, she said, you know, you don't even need to go to the Greek reading the English. This is what, it, what I hear. Um, they want to change you, but they can't. So they're going to exclude you so that you can't change them. And I thought, oh, that's a really, that's a really good way of putting it. So I had a couple of different thoughts here, and I'm gonna go over this with you both from the perspective she shared and kind of the understanding that I felt from the spirit. And so this idea that they're desirous of you, I mean, this is how churches are. This is talking about churches that want you know, to reject whether it be the gospel of Jesus Christ or the way Paul's teaching or the apostles at that time, they're saying, no, don't listen to them. We want you to join us. We want you to leave all that behind and go by our teachings. So this is, this has happened. This happens a lot in a lot of different Christian organizations. And I'm just going to stick to Christianity because it's what I know. I'm not trying to pick on Christianity. It's just, it's who we are. So let's talk about ourselves. But this idea of conformity rather than diversity. They say, we want you to be one of us, but to be one of us, you've got to be like us. We're not really too worried about 
what the scriptures say or what you think or what you know. What we want is for you to be exactly like us. So again, not in a good way. Because Jesus wants us to be more like him, not like a collective. Christianity isn't, if you're familiar with Star Trek, Christianity isn't the Borg. Mormonism isn't the Borg. The idea isn't assimilation. The idea is to bring souls to Jesus Christ. And as we grow in Christ, we're all going to be blessed with different spiritual gifts, different understandings. And then why is it that when two or three of us is when we gather, two or three of us gather, Jesus is there because now we can take the pieces of the puzzle that we have as finite beings and lock them in place and say, hey, you know, we may disagree on things, but let's look at what we have in common and let's learn from each other in our differences, in our diversity. But the warning here is that they want to isolate you. So in this instance, they want to say there's a barrier between you and God. And to get to God, you must go through them. And in this way, their idea is that you will be, desired, be desiring to join them and to change who you are and whoever God wants you to be so that you can be a member of their organization. Now, I'm not going to pick on any particular churches out there because to be blunt, this sounds like a lot of churches. I counsel people that are Latter-day Saints from a variety of backgrounds and people who aren't even Latter-day Saints, but the Lord sends them to me and, and I talk to them and I do the best I can with the limited understanding I have on Catholicism or Protestantism. And, and I tell them, look, I'm, I'm not going to try to convert you to Mormonism. That's, you know, between you and God, but I'll do what I can with what I have. And the biggest complaint I hear is they're attending some sort of church that says, if you're not like us, get out. We want you to be here, but we don't want you to be here until you want to be like us. And I really feel that's, that's exactly what Christine said. I, I wrote it down here on my phone. This idea that they want to change you, but they can't. And so because of that, they're going to exclude you. Why? Because if they say in order to get in heaven, you have to do X, Y, and Z, and they say, hey, you're welcome here. And you say, well, I think X is good. I'm not so sure about Y, and I'm not happy with Z at all. Well, at that point, then you're destroying their church. And this is really the problem that Jesus had when he talked to Joseph Smith in the first vision, when he said that the creeds were an abomination. What's a creed? A creed is a verbal expression that says, this belief is what's going to divide us from everybody else. And if you're going to disagree, you can't be with us. This is the definition of a creed. Either think like we do or get out. We want you to be with us, but we don't want you to change us. And here's my, my issue with this idea. As Christians, we understand that we are saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. This is talked about in the New Testament. It's talked about in the, quite a bit in the Book of Mormon. If we're saved by grace, then the works we do, as Jacob says in the Book of Jacob, there's nothing that we can do without being moved by the grace of Jesus Christ. So any works that we do, if we decide to repent, why do we repent? Because we've accepted Jesus Christ. If we decide to get baptized, why? Because we're moved by the Holy Spirit to be baptized. If you join a particular church and the, and the Spirit says, you know, you don't, I don't want you to do this yet. You're not ready. Whether it be baptism or anything else, then you should be okay to attend, to be a member or whatever they call themselves, because you're following the Spirit of God. There can't be a line, a disconnect between you and God. You, there has to be a direct connection. And to be quite frank, that's one of the things that people don't like about the fellowship. 
Our goal isn't to change you and tell you what to think or what to believe. Our goal is for you to create a personal relationship, to build a personal relationship between you and the Lord. And then we want you to come back and tell us what you know. Even if it spits in the face of everything else that, that's on the website or anybody else here believes, we want to know. Because we want everyone to change one another. One of the laws, if you will, that Jesus gave us, he said, be therefore perfect in Matthew 5. And I know I talk about this a lot. How are we perfect? By loving our enemies. Are our fellow Christians our enemies? I hope not. If we're seeing our fellow Christians, our fellow Latter-day Saints, as our enemies, then what part of this verse here, verse 17, are we? We want you to join us, but not in a good way. So we're going to isolate you. We're going to segregate you. We're going to make you feel alone until you're willing to conform to us so that we don't have to change. It unfortunately reminds me a lot of things that I heard growing up in the Salt Lake City Church. Things like whiter the skin, the lesser the sin. White makes right. Now, I know that's not their doctrine, and I know that's no longer their theology. But culturally, it's lingering. It's still there. At least it was when I left, when my family and I left. And I know they're not the only one. I know there's other Christian churches out there that exclude people for a variety of different reasons, whether it be because of a difference in theology or a difference in lifestyle or what, what have you. But at the end of the day, church isn't a shrine for only the holiest of holies to enter. It's a hospital. None of us are perfect. If we wait for God to love us to come to church in, in our perfection, well, I've got two things for you. Number one, you're already perfect through the grace of Jesus Christ. And number two, if you're looking for total perfection, the way that Christ was perfect, then the only person there is going to be Jesus, and he's going to be very lonely. We have to accept the grace of Jesus Christ into our hearts so that we can grow in that grace by doing the works that the Holy Spirit asks us to do. And we can't do that if we're following a checklist given to us by the creeds of men. It's interesting. People ask me all the time, well, you know, your, your first, the first article there in your constitution says you believe in God the Father and God the Mother and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Are they all one person? Are they separate? How does that work? And my response is, well, that depends on who you ask. Some of us don't even believe that there's a Heavenly Mother. Because we are not a conformist church. We're an ecumenical movement. We don't ask anyone to leave their churches to come here. We don't tell people what they have to think if they want to worship with us. We welcome those that disagree with us. Why? Because we can't learn from them if we don't. And we can't teach them if we don't. It doesn't really matter if one person is right or another person is wrong. What matters is that we need to be able to love one another enough to listen to our differences and love one another, not in spite of them, but because of them. I learn so much more about myself when I hear the beliefs of others because either I learn something new I deepen my own beliefs or I learn something about someone new. I may not make up my mind whether I believe what they think or not, but I'm learning about them and I appreciate that. So I want to flip this around. What's my message for you today? I want to flip this around. Instead of being zealous 
for our fellow saints and for those that would be saints in a bad way, let's be zealous in a good way. Let's desire them to come in fellowship with us because we love them, because we accept them where they are. And rather than trying to isolate people and make people feel trapped or alone, let's make them feel welcome so that they'll desire to be with us because they know they can come as they are. And they know they only have to change if the Holy Spirit tells them to change. My message, as always, is how can we love a little more? How can we be a little more accepting? How can we judge a little less? So that's my message for you. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are now going to partake of the sacrament. We we're going to read both prayers. And then we can pause the video to partake of the sacrament. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's word, the sacrament, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Elohim should I, we bow our heads before you at this time to thank you for all of your many blessings, for the technology, for the freely available websites where we can place these videos, for all the people and the hard work that they do to ensure that these services are available regardless of their motivations. We're very thankful for you blessing us with these means that those that are seeking you can know that they are not alone. We thank you For the Holy Spirit that allows us to speak to each other spirit to spirit and we pray that this message will be received not merely by the ear but by the heart not merely by the by the mind but by the soul and we pray that those that hear this word and feel thy spirit through it 
will share it with those that need it. We'd like to ask for a special blessing on the saints, the Latter-day Saints. Not merely those involved in the fellowship or friends of the fellowship, but all saints. Help us to love one another more. Help us to seek Zion a little harder. Help us to find the things that we have in common far more than the things that we do not. Please soften the hearts of all those out there seeking for self-gratification to fulfill worldly desires. Help all of us open our eyes to see the needs of others. And what's more, please open our eyes to help us see how we can help. Help us to wash away our excuses. Help us to wash away our insecurities. And see only the love that we have for our neighbors, for our enemies, for our fellow human beings. We are worshiping today because we love you, God. And we know that you love us. We have seen your goodness. We have felt your blessings. And we acknowledge you. We acknowledge the light that you have given us in our lives. When we ask you to please help us to be beacons, to be symbols of that light. Help us to find those that are seeking. Help us to heal those that are hurting through your word, through prayer, through your Holy Spirit, through love. Help us to break, to break through isolationism and exclusiveness. And help us to see the value in those that think differently, look differently, act differently, talk differently than we do. Help us to speak spirit to spirit that we have greater communication. Because only together we may seek you individually, but only together can we grow in you. Again, we thank you for all of your many blessings. We ask that your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And we pray that Those that have ears shall hear, and those that seek shall find. And these things we pray in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, so mote it be. Amen.